there have been at least eight presidents who have been NRA members. That goes all the way back to Ulysses S. Grant, but uh, the vast majority of those were post-World War II presidents. Taft was a member, and after World War II, Eisenhower was a member, Kennedy was a member, Nixon was a member. So NRA membership has been a fairly common thing with United States presidents, and appreciation and ownership of firearms has also been a fairly common thing with uh, United States presidents. The NRA Museums is a group of three museums. The vast majority of the 8,000 pieces that we take care of have been donations over the 80-year existence of the NRA Museums. The average citizen back during the, the period of the founding of this country, their attitude towards firearms was uh, they were uh, a necessary fact of life. Our founding fathers obviously thought that they were tools to be used in the uh, acquisition of our liberty. The uh, Constitution that they drafted, that they wrote, you know, contains numerous phrases uh, that are related to that, to defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. How do you do that? You do that with firearms. You know, a lot of people might think of Theodore Roosevelt as being one of the most gun-savvy presidents. But, you know, you go further back than that. You go all the way to George Washington and you find gun collectors in the White House. George Washington knew and loved his firearms. He was very aware of, of what he owned. And he had guns that he used on campaign as a military commander. Uh, they were essential to him in the field. He had firearms that he collected uh, that were gifts to him, such as a brace of pistols uh, that the Marquis de Lafayette uh, gave to him that he cherished. Jefferson was truly a Renaissance man. He was involved and in, in excelled at so many different things on so many different levels. He was an inventor. He loved gadgets. He, he enjoyed firearms tremendously. He had quite a collection of them. Uh, his firearms and his book collection were amazing. He remarked about a gentleman he met in France named Henri Blanc. He had demonstrated to Jefferson how firearms could be made on a process where identical parts were, were manufactured by machines. And then all you would have to do would be to assemble a lock. And uh, you had interchangeable parts. You had the Industrial Revolution. 